bloodletting. Goop is promoting bloodletting to treat a condition that doesn't exist. Maybe the internet is bad. The Goop Lab with Gwyneth Paltrow, this was announced several months ago now. I totally forgot about it until Netflix dropped the trailer a day or two ago. It's a six-series show that will start on January 24th, again on Netflix, and a lot of people are unhappy about this for several reasons. Gwyneth and the website that she founded, Goop, have been criticized by virtually everyone for crazy claims, for ridiculous products, everything from jade eggs that you stick in your vagina for reasons, to stickers that heal you. She has associated with and promoted other, like, crazy potentially dangerous people like the medical medium guy that promotes celery juice and supplements as a cure-all because of the spirit of compassion and light blast and it's all very convincing. Totally not a scam. Then there's fitness influencer Tracy Anderson. She is Gwyneth Paltrow's personal trainer. She believes that women should not lift more than three pounds. Pretty sure that's impossible considering like I don't know, a grocery bag can easily weigh more than three pounds. I think children generally weigh more than three pounds. She also thinks being in this position for several minutes on end is appropriate during pregnancy. Gwyneth has sold products containing ingredients that she has told her audience are unsafe, like should be avoided. This is actually incredibly common within the kind of alt-med sphere. She was fined for making unsubstantiated claims about two of her products, that they, for instance, prevent depression and uterine prolapse. So given all of this, all of this information about Gwyneth, about Goop, that is out there, that is easy to find, you'd think that, I don't know, that they would be maybe struggling financially, that maybe, I don't know, they changed their ways, that they're no longer profiting off of garbage content, off of garbage, potentially dangerous products. Because we're in the best timeline, no and no. Perusing the Goop website is absolutely exhausting. Like there is so much nonsense. It's January. So of course the whole site right now is like detox focused. The top five detox essentials for great skin, which is of course one big ad for their own products. The annual five day detox inspired by Dr. Alejandro's clean program. He is an actual MD who promotes detoxing, obviously, colon cleansing, adrenal fatigue, which is not a thing. And of course, they have an article geared towards vegans. They're just trying to be inclusive, I'm sure. As my favorite YouTube fitness coach, Body Fit by Amy, said in her recent newsletter, her January newsletter, if you want to detox, drink water, limit alcohol, eat enough fiber. As long as you have a liver, you are getting a daily top-of-the-line detoxing cleanse. From that same wellness section of the site, Goop offers this article on Lyme disease. The author says that there is basically no evidence for alternative treatments, but that they could be valuable and to work with an experienced, well-qualified practitioner. Experienced in what? In treatments that don't work? You just said that these treatments are not evidence-based. Why would you encourage people to seek out practitioners that are treating people with treatments that aren't... Ev they want to have it both ways, I think. They're trying to seem more sciencey because they've gotten so much criticism, but of course they still have to promote alt-med because it's an alt-med site. It's just really funny, but it's not funny because they're promoting alternative treatments for Lyme disease. They also link to this other article by another actual MD who thinks chronic Lyme disease is a thing and that it can be treated by sweating, taking laxatives, and the removal of small quantities of blood. Bloodletting. Goop is promoting bloodletting to treat a condition that doesn't exist. Maybe the internet is bad. This is all from the very first page of the wellness section of Goop. The shop section, of course, is no better. These chews contain elderberry extract, which supposedly supports the immune system. I assume that they're getting this from studies on elderberry and the flu and it, you know, possibly shortening the flu or minimizing symptoms. Evidence isn't super convincing. This is basically a multivitamin with a bunch of extra bullshit so they can market it for menopause, like rhodiola. It's $90 a month, but only $70 with a subscription. 
Here's a crystal infused water bottle to help you tap into your own intuition. $84. Four Sigmatic, because of course. And this is all after assembling a science and regulatory team that supposedly uses an evidence-based approach to screen products, ingredients, and claims. If you've seen my video on Four Sigmatic, you are fully aware just how evidence-based those products are. As Jezebel put it, Gwyneth and Goop make their money by promoting endless illness. Whether or not they realize it, the goal here is to make you believe that there is something wrong with you, lots of things wrong with you constantly, things that doctors can't fix, won't fix, don't acknowledge, things that Goop can help you with. And yeah, of course, this is all really about, you know, educating people and you don't have to pay Gwyneth any money to live a healthy lifestyle. But also here's a $90 supplement that supports your immune system, which is like important. So I don't know, probably something that you need, probably worth $90 a month. And also here's a detoxifying super powder. It's only $60 a month. You can afford it. And it's all in the guise of taking control, taking control of your own health and well-being. I think this is why Goop is attractive to so many people, particularly women. As other people have said, there is a long history of women not being respected, not being taken seriously by the medical community. Having a site run by a woman, someone who says, I believe you, when you say you have this problem, I believe you, and here's the solution. Even if the solution makes no sense and is insanely expensive, I think it can feel really amazing and can keep people coming back and opening their wallets again and again and again because they feel like someone actually cares and is actually listening. I think it's why people turn to Altmed in general, why people turn to naturopaths and, you know, functional medicine practitioners, people like that. Because instead of saying, we can't find out what's wrong with you, so we're not going to treat you because we don't know what's wrong with you, so we don't know how to treat you, natural paths and practitioners like that will find something wrong with you and they will treat you, even if that means charging you exorbitant prices for testing and supplements that are useless to treat a condition that you don't have, it still feels like they're doing more, like they actually care. But doing more isn't always better, and useless doesn't always mean harmless. You know, drinking Four Sigmatic or using a $200 Kegel trainer probably isn't going to hurt anyone. But taking laxatives for a condition that doesn't exist absolutely could. Getting colonics absolutely could. Goop is not anti-vax, though. I will give them that. That's great. They have this whole article that's pro-vaccine. It's terrific. Although they did invite a couple anti-vax doctors to speak at their Goop Summit last year. They didn't talk about vaccines, thank goodness. Instead, they spent their time denigrating medicines, medications, and, you know, promoting alternatives. So not medicine. You take what you can get. Beggars can't be choosers, you know? <laughs> it's better than nothing. And honestly, that they have this article when you search goop and vaccines and this is what comes up. Not at all what I expected when I googled goop and vaccines. So, yay. Really quick, uh, I read her detox book that just came out, on, I think like the day that I read it. Uh, it's basically the stuff you find on goop. Several vegan recipes, but it's stuff that you've seen a million times before you know, chia seed puddings and smoothies and soups. Most of the vegan stuff is low in protein. There's even like a vegan taco recipe, but instead of using beans, she uses beets because beans are harder for some people to digest. So now it's just like vegetable tacos. <laughs> Sounds good. No gluten or soy because it's a cleanse and those are not cleansing, I suppose. Uh, the recipes are very simple. Again, it's stuff that I think for the most part you've seen a million times before. Uh, one of the recipes is literally cereal with freeze-dried fruit on top. There are all these photos throughout the book, you know, some of the recipes, but others that are like mostly pictures of her. Fine, she's beautiful, but it's a recipe book. I mean, I know it's like a detox book and it's focused on weight loss. I mean, it's, you know, it's focused on health, but really, you know, it's focused on weight loss. It's just, it's just weird to come across like 
a smoothie recipe. And then on the next page, it's it's Gwyneth Paltrow. I, I don't think anyone can do that without coming across self-absorbed, a little conceited. I mean, look, if I looked like that, I'm sure I'd be doing the same shit. It's just weird. I don't know. It just, it made me laugh, honestly, particularly like there is a smoothie recipe and then the next page is just her. And it's just, it's funny. Obviously, I'm not the target audience for this. I'm not going on cleanses or anything. So I'm sure someone who's actually interested in that and what Gwyneth is offering, I guess that's like inspiring because you want to look like her. And of course, she says that the way she looks has nothing to do with her genetics, that she works very, very hard. I'm sure she does work very, very hard, but it's incredibly irresponsible to say that. I mean, number one, you don't you don't know exactly what your genes are or are not responsible for. And obviously, they play a role in how you look and your weight to just suggest that anyone can look like Gwyneth if they try hard enough. Wow, dude. Super cool. Nice message. The second part of the book is where most of the pseudoscience lies. She does like a series of interviews, five or six interviews with, uh, again, her kind of favorite doctors, these recurring characters you see on Goop. Again, that doctor younger guy that promotes the detoxing and colon cleanses and all that stuff. One interview is about candida overgrowth. No. One's on getting rid of heavy metals. Okay. Oh, there's that anti-vax doctor again. Awesome. So the book is recipes that you can find anywhere and misinformation that you can find for free on Goop or really any other alt med site. It honestly just seems like a really lazy cash grab. So that's Gwyneth and that's Goop. And I mean, that's not all of it by any means. There's so much more, so much more garbage, so many more dumb horrible, expensive products. This is just, again, what I found in like a very, very brief search of the site. Clearly, they do not care about evidence-based, science-based, anything. They care more about making money. It's a business. They cannot be trusted when it comes to health, nutrition, anything. Please do not watch the show, even just for like shits and giggles. Do not give Netflix any indication that this is something that we want more of, because if this does numbers, we're going to see more of the shit. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you guys had a good holiday season, holiday time, new year, all that kind of stuff. I was sick. New Year's Eve. We wouldn't have stayed up till midnight anyway. <laughs> That's why it's been a little longer than I wanted to get uh, new videos out. I wanted to only take like a week off and get started, you know, back to work a week ago. But again, then I got sick. So I was like, well, all right, I guess I'm just doing like basically the, you know, like the public school break, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like a two week break, which I guess was nice. I mean, I was kind of ready to go back to work already. I don't think I really needed a whole other week off. So Eh, what are you going to do? My favorite thing about Goop, uh, really Gwyneth, is how she responds to criticism. She doesn't, or she, <laughs> she acts as though all of the criticism is coming from like this kind of anti-woman, uh, prudish kind of place. Like she only talks about people criticizing the site for being, you know, pro-woman, um, kind of like pro-sex, pro-sexual health, that sort of thing. When we write about female sexual health, people always get completely up in arms. Okay, but most of the criticism is not about that at all. I haven't heard anyone criticize Goop for talking about vaginas or anal sex or whatever. I've heard people, including doctors, criticize her for harming vaginas. <laughs> That's the issue. And the idea that Goop is the only place you can go to, you know, read about things like anal sex is really funny to me. Like that's, that's her idea of super taboo sex stuff. <laughs> it's kind of adorable. This is a vibrator necklace. There's nothing wrong with that. Just thought I'd share. I mean, there is no, there is something wrong. <laughs> it's so gimmicky. Like, who even wants to use that? It looks not fun.
And then it also just looks stupid as a necklace. Jack of all trades, master of none, right? It fails at both of its uses. I mean, I guess that's subjective, but no, it's not. This is objectively dumb. Maybe this is the way we categorize people, like good or bad. If you would wear this, you're just bad. You're a bad person. <laughs> I figured it out. 